There it is, boys. Right next to the scenic viewpoint. I am so excited. Look at this place. Oh my gosh, dude. Holy crap. We pulled up to the Soaring Eagle Lodge and I think all of our jaws hit the floor. It was a beautiful view of all the mountains and the ocean and I couldn't believe that this was gonna be our place to stay for an entire week. We hardly made it here, guys. And he's back on the pizza kick. Oh yeah? I started it. I'll admit it, I started cheers. it. Cheers. And cheers to Clint for taking us to the pizza spot. Mm -hmm. The moose knuckle. Dude, this oh, <laughs> the moose knuckle. <laughs> I don't think that was the same. <laughs> what it was even? close. Moose tooth. Moose tooth. Yeah. Moose tooth. <laughs> We're not knuckling any mooses. Well, let's go check this place out. Oh, boy. High fives all around, man. Thank you. Big shout out already at the beginning of this video to the Nilchik Outfitters for setting this all up. Our main host has shown up here in just a few minutes, but we're just gonna wander around and check this place out. Look at this, it's incredible. This is what people will be coming in, you know, they'll be coming in for the first time, they kind of see in the sides, they'll be, uh, the grass will be a little greener here, still early years, so I haven't quite- My favorite is when you pass the, the state viewpoint. Oh and then yeah, you pull and you in. Yeah, it's yeah. just like this is it. Here yeah. you go. All right. Well, let's check it out. Yeah, come on up. The doors unlocked and everything up here. So. Oh man, how awesome! Yeah. Right Look at this. <laughs> Bottle of wine and flowers and everything. Fruit basket. <laughs> <laughs> I I told these guys this is their first time to Alaska, and I told them we were gonna wine and dine them. But I didn't think we were being really serious. Yeah, literally. You know, wine and literally dine, wine yeah. and dine in them, guys. This is awesome. Nothing like coming off a long trip, just kicking back with a bottle of wine, yeah, relaxing, know. you know. So, oh, this yeah. is so cool. Thank Got the guys. fireplace. Yes, sir. Come on, yeah, let's check out the bedrooms, awesome. everybody. Awesome little amenities. Got two bunks in here. Now this is really cool. So we got a heck of a heck of a week planned for you guys. We got ocean fishing, we got river fishing, we got clamming, we got sightseeing. Steve's really hooked us up so far with this, so our itinerary is going to change throughout the week and we're just going to go have fun. That's what we're here to do. We're here to show these guys what Alaska is all about. Dude, I'm excited. It's my first time. Yeah. Heck yeah, guys. Clint, high fives. Hell yeah. Steve, high fives, man. We yes, made sir. it. Hey. Thank you so much. It's time to rock, man. Hey, look at the view right. from the patio. All right, everybody, so we're gonna have a fun little theme worked out through this entire series of episodes. And we have some really special guest appearances, some Hollywood guest appearances from some of our favorite Hollywood actors. We got Batman in honor of Pumbaa. Batman's gonna be doing some pretty cool work out here. He's gonna be saving lives. He might even be catching some fish. We got Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he loves fishing and he's the man. And then we got Stuart the Minion himself. And these little guys are gonna be making guest appearances all throughout these episodes. So be sure to comment below with where you see them and where you want to see them and if you guys enjoyed this stuff. So today's first guest appearance is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Let's see how many times you guys can find him in this episode. Everybody, good morning. Adventure number one, day number one. We're with Captain Skyler today. We're here at the Nilchik Outfitters. And I think for the itinerary today, we're going out and we're doing some razor clamming. We're gonna do some glacier watching, possibly. We're gonna do an adventure. I don't even know. Our itinerary's been switching up a little bit. They're trying to plan this trip best to suit our needs and the needs of whatever is gonna be best fishing. So I'm excited. And that's kind of the cool part about this charter is we have seven days here. Uh, totally different days all in itself. We're gonna be launching at the same spot twice, but going somewhere different every single morning. So I'm absolutely stoked. I'm waking they up. Are, they are too. We're freaking in Alaska, man. <laughs> I'm excited. This guy's been complaining all the whole time. So it never really got dark last night. That's something to expect when you come up here. The sun only sets about as much as it did here, um, like you see this morning, but we're gonna get out there. We're gonna get this boat launched. Sounds like we're going to a really cool spot for the launch. So let's go have some fun. Kyle, tell us a little bit about what we're doing here. This is a, I noticed you just unhooked the truck. 
Yeah, so uh, <laughs> these, these skitters here are gonna come along, they're gonna back us in the water. We're gonna head across the bay about 35 miles. And uh, basically as the tide's going out, we're gonna send the boat up into the sand and we're gonna beach the boat. The tide's gonna head way out past us, about 150, 200 yards. We'll be out clam digging for about two hours or so. And once that tide starts to come back in, we'll hop in the boat. Yeah, perfect. And we'll, we'll head back. That's gonna be a trip. So we're using logging equipment down here, guys, big tractors. We normally you'd use the yard logs out of a clear cut or whatever. And we're gonna back these boats right off the beach down in the, into the ocean. So I've been hearing about this for a long time. It would be cool to actually see it. You said the water's a little bit calmer than it normally is though, right? Yeah, we'll be able to just <laughs> go across, no issue. Dang it, I was, I was, I was hoping it was gonna be a rodeo launching these things a little bit. No, this, this is good, we're good here. Yeah, so I'm fine. This is these two's first time fishing in Alaska, or clamming in Alaska, so. Being in Alaska. You guys know how to eat dick clams? Never done it Not before. Not ever done it with shovels. Never even done razor you clams before. All right, well guys, let's, let's see how this goes. This is gonna be awesome. So we meet up with Skyler, our guide for the week, and he informs us we're going 28 miles across the bay. Because originally I thought we were just gonna drive to a clamming spot, but where we were at in the Cook Inlet, this certain area where you can actually drive to to clam is closed because there's a big winter die off of the clams. You either have to take a plane or a boat 30 miles across the inlet to this area that you're allowed to go clamming in. And that was probably the biggest adventure of all. I had no clue and it really heightened the experience of even going clamming. Again, it's a really fun thing for any of you people out there who have never done it before. Um, you, it's just, it's very interactive. You go out and dig in the mud all day and, and the dividends that are paid by it are these delicious razor clams. It's really happening. Yards and surf is gonna whip us around, it's gonna back us right in. Thankfully, it's really calm today. Skyler was saying three days ago there was big breakers coming in, so you guys could imagine trying to do this and get this thing untrailered in the surf like this. But today, we've got absolutely perfect conditions. Watching the sun come up out here, we're in paradise. across it was absolute glass we went full throttle all the way and as we got closer and closer I couldn't wait to get out of that boat very rarely that one's actually probably the best I've seen it's wicked when it does that yeah so yeah, we're talking is. about guys on, on the way over here as the sun comes up and that heat changes and the like, moisture starts to rise, you get a really crazy optical illusion across the water like that. It's 35 miles from the other side. So it looked like tabletop mesas, like he was saying, like in Arizona or somewhere. Uh, honestly, on the way over, I'm like, I thought that's exactly what the mountains looked like. I'm like, oh, look, look at how the oceans receded over the years. But really, it was just an optical illusion as we came across the bay. So the sights out here this morning are absolutely unreal. have wet areas of sand and really dry areas of sand right in the middle that's where you want to go you're gonna to go to the driest stuff first and then gradually kind of work it back and you can kind of follow the tide out as your dimples start to show so that's what you're looking for is those little dimples and uh, it's definitely where that sand starts to dry up at first you'll find it the easiest perfect the tidal swing in, in the Cook Inlet is the second biggest in the world. The amount of water that is displaced by the tide and by the moon phase. And the idea here, which was just crazy to me, was to pull up, beach the boat on the ground, let it go high and dry with the tide, and then go clamming. It was just the weirdest thing ever for me and, and to conceive. Check that one out, guys. What a beauty. And the goal is to not break these because the reason they're called razor clams is how razor sharp these things can be. That's not too bad. But the main thing why you don't want to break them is because as you go to clean these things, you're gonna cut yourself and it makes it a lot harder. And we'll show you how to clean them throughout the day. But that's a really good one too. I'm taking him. And I didn't break it. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good one there. We're on them, everybody. We're on them. Black dog on them. 
I think too guys, another another really good tip is as you go down looking for that on that second dig, go a lot slower. Yeah. I think a lot of us get a little hasty thinking these things are gonna like scoot away from us so fast, but they're never really gonna go more than about half their shell length as they start digging down with that boot. So we keep actually breaking some. Got some broken ones in here. You should never leave the broken ones because they're just gonna die and it's a waste of the resource. So if you guys are breaking them, if you're out there doing this yourself and you're going down and you keep hitting them and breaking them, try going a little bit slower on that second push and actually feel for that clam and work your way around his body and then get down and suck them out. I just wonder. There he is. Got him. Same idea, I worked down slow, worked him right up and out, felt for him, and I got him. Whoa, another hog. Look at the boot on that one. Holy moly. We're on a hog patch, dude, we're on the hog pile. Hog pile. Oh, what do you know? What's that? Dwayne, what are you doing hanging out with the clams? Goodness gracious, guys, this guy can't be trusted. What do you know? Got a clam. I thought it was a rock, but it turned out to be actually. Little. Little again. What the heck? So once I had my clams, I looked over and I could see the tide kept going out. And as we came into the bay at this, uh, the earlier in the morning, I looked over and I could see the rock starting to expose. And it, and it t dawned on me, I was like, man, that looks like a cool area that's gonna be a tide pool. You know, being from the West Coast and, and being able to play in tide pools my whole life uh, along the Pacific Ocean, it was, uh, as I saw this forming, I had my bucket of clams and I said, hell, I'm gonna run over there and see what's going on. These tide pools could be cool because it's a big negative tide. So there's areas that'll be exposed that normally wouldn't be with certain tides. So I dropped my bucket off by the boat and I headed over to the tide pool. Check this out, little guys. I found this little sole. It's a little flounder species. See if I can get him. There you go. Did I get him? Oh, he just dug himself down into the sand. Super cool here. There he goes right there. Got him. So I knew we'd find some cool stuff coming out here. This here, guys, it's a sole. It's just a little tiny baby flounder. Really, really cool species of fish. This looks just like the halibut that we're gonna be catching here in the next few days. Let's get him back in there. I just saw him skirting around in this little tide pool. Hopefully he finds himself a nice spot to hide. And look how he just dug himself right down in the sand there. That's super cool, he just disappeared. You did, do it. Got him, big old quahog, Clint, nice. Nice! So totally different species of clam here, guys. These are, there's a couple different names for them, but a lot of people around the world call them quahog clams. Super cool, we're gonna take that one. Why not? Have a little multi-species catching cook for you, everybody. That one. Look at that. Dude. Oh, there's one. They're really good. Nice. Oh, oh. totally different one. Look at it. That's a giant butter clam, man. Super cool. See, I knew this would pay off. Look at all, there's all these divots, you guys. So you see in this, everybody? There's these, all these different little divots here from in the mud, and these things seem to be right under them in that mud. Oh, I struck out there. Nothing on that one. Oh, I found a sand dollar. Different kind of divot, but got a sand dollar. It's pretty cool. Sand dollar again. Crazy. Cool little guy. I think these are actually alive too. Those darker colored ones, Mike. Oh really? Yeah, those darker ones. You see that one actually looks dead. Just a perfect little one. Man, this is cool. I'm glad we walked out here. There's all kinds of stuff going on. This one is that alive? one's alive. Yeah. Because there was a little divot around them. So do they do the same thing? Yep, they skirt around, they walk around on the bottom. You ever seen like oh, okay. underwater footage of them? Uh-uh, but look they're, at these speed seeing movers. They're yep. gonna move. Oh wow, yeah, all those little legs. It's kind of like a sea star almost. Yeah, I'm gonna let this one go. I didn't know that they were, I didn't, I had no idea that they were like a, a live creature. Check it out. 
Yeah. Look at his track. He's just walking across. You can actually see him pushing the sand out of the way right now. That's cool, dude. Super neat. Cool. Let's keep walking, everybody. Let's see what else we can find. Whoa! Almost lost my boot. <laughs> oh my god. That was close. You learned to do. Oh! <laughs> We're losing Mike, everyone. He might be going back for a shovel. Oh, he slipped back in his shell. He's in his shell. So I don't know about you guys, but I grew up with a lot of these. Everybody back in the day used to have their hermit crab. He's hiding in there. He's got some pretty cool character on his little body. Check this out, everybody. Look at the base. Right at the base of this big rock out here in the middle. We got these sea anemones. Oh, he got me. He stuck right to me. This thing's actually, I think, sting you a little bit, kind of like similar to a jellyfish, but super weird, super soft texture. And when the when the tide comes in and the water's out and there's food around them, all these little tentacles come out and they catch all kinds of microplankton and different sort of creatures that swim around, and that's how they feed themselves. So look at this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. It's so cool. So crazy out here, guys. I feel like a little kid again. There's just so much different aquatic life. Skylar was telling us this morning as we were coming in that tomorrow, on Wednesday, there's gonna be the lowest tides it's been in years. It's gonna be 22 foot drop of water. And which, in this spectrum, it's kind of hard to fathom, but 22 feet more, basically, it's gonna almost, the tide's gonna go out all the way almost to the mountain sides over here. So we're getting a look at something we normally I don't think would have, uh, being able to come down into these tide pools like that. That's why when I was across the way there, I wanted to come check it out, because I knew, there's gonna be some cool life over here. Let's keep searching. Found a Dungeness crab. Oh, it's a giant too. Holy moly. Check it out, everybody, check it out. Look at that thing, everybody. I knew this was a good idea. Check it out, see if we can get him to fight with the camera. Oh, he's all flared up. He's pissed, he's pissed. Oh, he's going after it. Oh, 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 he's getting it. Oh yeah, battle royale out here in the tide pool. Ja, ja, oh, oh, he's after me. Oh, he's got me. Oh, come on. Oh, he's got it, he's got it. <laughs> so as you guys will see, uh, as we were playing in this tide pool, how I had that GoPro and I was sticking under the water. That's uh, kind of a funny story for this episode. But the second day, we're gonna, we're gonna jump forward a day here. The second day, we were getting on the boat to go out for the second episode, which you guys are gonna see here soon. And Sean asked me, he goes, where's the handheld? And I said, well, what do you mean, camera guy? You should know where the handheld's at. And he goes, well, I gave it to you. And we started thinking about it and pondering on it. And the last place the old handhelds was touched was sitting on top of the rock in the middle of the ocean, trying to take a thumbnail. Um, and I went off to dig a few more clams and I had Sean pick up the bucket and lo and behold, the camera got left behind with all this cool underwater footage that you guys are seeing here. Hopefully, if any of you people out there that come out to Alaska and beachcomb find a GoPro 8 with a little gimbal stick, uh, it'll be floating around because it floats. Be sure to send it to orders at addicted.fishing and get that footage back and we'll reimburse you fully for it. All right, now that we got them all riled up, check it out, everybody. Old Dungy himself, a big female. You can tell by the way she is there. She's got that really big fat tail on her. How neat. Let's get her back in there. See you later, sweetheart. Mmm, I love the smell of low tide. Whoa, check that one out, world. Nice. Unreal. Wow, that one. That one has the prettiest little shell ever. That is cool. Wow, but we're gonna put it back. That one's still in there. That one looks dead. Ooh, look at the size of that hermit. Oh, another, yeah. Another just king hermit. Wow, look at how cool that is, everyone. Such an interesting little species. It's a soft shell crab that creates its own exoskeleton by using these shells that they find on the bottom of the ocean. I know growing up, a lot of my friends and you know people that I knew growing up, even the cameraman Sean here, had hermit crabs as pets. But it's pretty cool. I've never really come out here and seen so many of them like this. Especially ones this beautiful. Look at how cool he looks. <laughs> okay, we'll put him back in there. See you later, buddy. Oh, a sea urchin! Check it out. 
I was wondering when we were gonna find one of these. Cool. Now these little guys are an absolute delicacy. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if we can keep them. So I'm gonna go back and ask Skylar, but we're gonna put them in our bucket and we'll see if we can crack this thing open and eat it. These things are a, a super, super delicacy. A lot of different cultures like to eat these. And look at how neat that is. Wow. We're putting them in the bucket. That is so cool. What do you guys think of that? Comment below with whether or not you guys have ever eaten one of these things. I've seen them, they use like a weird cracker thing and they crack it in, split it open, and I'm not sure, but I think they might eat them raw. But we're gonna have to do some research. I need to go back and ask if we can actually keep it at all. We might just be putting it right back in the tide pool, but I'm gonna put it in the bucket. Got him, got him, got him. Sweet. Another different species of clam, you guys. I think again, this is the big butter clam. I'm gonna put him in here, let's try to find another one. Those ones are some of my favorite. Normally when we eat them, they're, they're more formally known as, as steamer clams at home. These are obviously a lot bigger. I might be wrong on the identification. There's another one, got him. I might be wrong on the identification of those, so you guys comment below if you actually know the name of these things. I'm sure there's a lot of different slangs and, and different terms for them, but I think my name for them right now is Tasty. There's another. They're kind of all around us here. Let's just keep digging by hand. Nice. Beautiful. Awesome guys, well check out our bucket. That was well worth the walk out here. We got some of the butters. We got a couple of quahogs. We got some souvenirs for the kids back home. Heck yeah man, that was cool. Nice out work. here doing it like man, hand digging them. <laughs> well, we're gonna head back over. Let's wait for the tide to come back in. Let's go back and start cooking. So razor clams are ready to go. We're gonna do a little battering with those and get them nice and fried up. We're gonna do a totally different recipe with our butter clams. So what we're doing, to save us a little time, again, if you're gonna be eating these butter clams normally, or a steamer clam like this, you wanna let them actually purge. You wanna either hang them off a dock, set them in a bucket full of water so they're not touching the bottom so they can get all the sand out of them. We're trying to cook these things right away so you guys can see it, and because we wanna eat them really bad. So what we're doing instead is I'm actually just steaming these things. So we have our strainer set up on a boiling pot of water, as you see here. So we're gonna steam them until they open up and then that's gonna give me the ability to actually clean them out a little bit. So I'll clean these clams and then I got a white wine Alfredo sauce I'm gonna drizzle these with. And then we're gonna cook our cockle clams just a little bit differently. So let's check this out. All right, everybody, our butter clams have opened up. And again, normally I would like to keep these things intact, try to keep all that meat on that clam itself or on the shell. But again, these are Alaska style butters where they're huge. So I'm gonna have to clean them. This is the clean one right here. I'm gonna toss it in, but I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing here. So big rule of thumb when it comes to these kind of clams is do not try to eat them if they don't open up. So you can see how we steam these ones. Each one of them is opening up. And I try to not cook them too much. I try to cook them just enough to where they open up and not actually cook the meat too much or else they'll get chewy. But as you can see, this is gonna be a little gross here. But I'm gonna show you why we're cleaning these things the way we are. You can see all those guts and all that nasty stuff inside there that normally would be purged out by the time we go to eat it. So I'm gonna squeeze that stuff out. I'm actually gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna cut that neck off right here. And then I'm gonna make a small little incision right there. And that, that, that boot right here on the end here, that's where a lot of that meat that we wanna eat is. So I'm gonna clean those guts out with each and every one of these. I'm gonna try to leave as much of that meat on. Make that a little colder. And you wanna clean these with cold water, once again, so that you don't 
keep continuing that, that cooking process. So clean those guts out. Very similar to the razor clam. We got the boot, we got the neck, we got the, the rest of the little wings and stuff here, and we're ready to eat. Butter clams are clean. Let's get our white wine sauce going. So the first ingredient to the white wine sauce, lots of butter. Very, very easy white wine Alfredo sauce I like to make at home myself. I think you guys may have seen it, maybe not. Comment below if you've seen this recipe in another addictive life. So what I'm doing here, about three quarters of a stick of butter. I got some red onion or some shallot if you have those, but we're in Alaska, so it's not as readily available. I got some fresh Got some fresh cut up garlic. I got a Roma tomato. I'm gonna let this stuff simmer in here. I'm gonna let that simmer around with all that butter till it's nice and melted. Add about a half cup of the white wine. Don't wanna overdo that or else this will get a little bit too strong, that white wine sauce. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of that white wine also to my clams themselves. And that's when I'm gonna braise these things. I'm gonna turn these things about half heat, add a little bit of that white wine, let these things kind of simmer, start to get cooked in it. Stick the butter in here. Now I'm gonna add my heavy whipping cream. No shortage of that, because we like it a lot. All right, everybody, so we see this is starting to boil. It's gonna start foaming up here. The key to this is, as you, it's gonna take a little bit of like pat in the belly while you're scratching the head thing, but you need to be able to keep this stirring, keep that stuff moving while you dump in that Parmesan cheese. That is the most important part of this, because if you don't, and that stuff starts to stick to the bottom and not melt, it starts to get really lumpy and gross. Make sure to keep stirring while I'm adding that cheese. So, oh wow, we're looking good. I'm just gonna do it all. Add a little Montreal seasoning to that. A little bit of pepper, some chili, some different stuff just for flavor to top it off. All right, the Alfredo is done. Let's give it a little taste. No cook should ever serve his food without trying it. Oh my God, absolutely perfect. Now let's get our razor clams going. Instead of seasoning my egg wash or my breading itself, I like to season these clams first before I even dip them and do anything. That way you can get the right amount of seasoning on each one. It kind of levels out that flavor and it makes it a little bit easier to cook a little bit easier to prepare. So these things are really good even just by themselves. You don't have to go super crazy on the seasoning of these. So I'm just doing a little bit of garlic powder, again, a little bit of Montreal just because what we got. Then I'm gonna egg wash these things, drop them in the egg, and then I'm going straight into the breadcrumbs. And this is a garlic herb breadcrumb here. And then we're going straight into a pan with butter. You can use oil to do this, but I like to use butter just because butter makes everything taste better. So you see the obvious difference here. We have our butters, we have our cockle clams, Totally different shape, totally different color. We're gonna add those in there. And then we have our razor clams over here. Again, totally different look, totally different feel. So make this easy. This is probably my favorite part of this recipe. And again, normally if you're using the butter clams here, you're gonna have a lot smaller portions uh, as far as the size of those clams. So I'm gonna leave them in the shell. It makes it kind of nice to be able to slurp this, this white wine sauce with this white wine Alfredo. But today I got the whole ones. I got a little bit of white wine in the base of that pan. And I'm just gonna take that sauce and drizzle it right over and let that stuff start cooking in there. I'm just gonna let this simmer for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. We got about a half cup of butter in here, or a quarter cup of butter. What I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna start adding all these razors. And I've seen a lot of people over the years, uh, a, lot of, a lot of friends from back home, they like to take like a meat tenderizer and pound on these, these razor clams like this so that they get them nice and tender, but honestly, my favorite part of the razor clam is the chewiness. I like that nice, chewy, you know, not exactly tender texture to it. It kind of gives it a little sustenance, gives it a little something to bite onto. And we're gonna take these things, we're gonna just roll them around here. Got all these in here, let's get these things breaded up nicely. Yep, and we're gonna let these simmer till the one side gets a golden brown. The one thing about these razors too, the meat's not very thick, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time. I'm gonna say about a minute and a half each side of this clam. You don't wanna undercook these things, of course. You don't wanna eat them raw, 
but I'm gonna flip these things over, make sure they're a nice golden brown. And really, again, it's gonna be the texture of the clam that you're gonna be able to tell that it's done. It's gonna have that nice kind of tender. You're gonna be able to stick your, your fork right through it like that. And you're gonna wait just a couple more minutes here, about another minute and a half, and then I'm gonna keep dumping these things in the pan. All right, these things are a nice golden brown. Another part about actually using that meat tenderizer on this is it allows that breading to stick a little bit better to this. As you saw, it had a little bit of a hard time. So when you when you use that meat tenderizer like that on those razor clams, it gives it a little bit of texture and it gives it something for that breading to stick to. So use that as a little tip. It might help you guys keep that breading on there. And it'll make it a little bit less of a mess in your pan here. Let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. Now, the way that that turned out, it almost kind of tastes like a rockfish or walleye. And I think it's more the breading, but the flavor of that clam is so mild. It's got a really nice meaty protein flavor to it. And it's absolutely delicious. Let's get the rest of these done. Okay, so the moment of truth with the butter clam. You can tell it's a butter clam by that little bit of a red color on the boot. Oh man. That is unreal. Got a really nice flavor from that Chardonnay. Got a really kind of strong flavor, that Parmesan. You can taste that pungent Parmesan flavor, as well as that little bit of that mildness of the whipping cream. Kind of settles down all those flavors together. Oh man, that's so good. Mmm. And I must say the, the butter clam is definitely the most tender compared to the uh, razor clam here. So now let's try the cockles. All right, so there's our cockle clam. You can see it's got that nice light color. A lot, lot more, it almost looks like a shrimp, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful how that turned out. Mmm. Now that one's just a little more stringy and a little more tough. It probably got a little overcooked when I steamed them in that pot. But usually, again, if you guys have smaller ones of these, if you have the choice, if you come up here to the Soaring Eagle Lodge and the Nilchuk Outfitters and you go out there and you dig these clams, try to pick those smaller ones because they're going to have a lot better texture for you. All right, let's get our boys in here to try this stuff and see what they think. That's pretty good. Try it. Come on. He ate the boot in first. He really didn't like it. That's nice and tender. Not that I can eat. That yeah. one's nice. It's no, more no, like that's... a scallop. No, that's delicious. So let it be said, the boots, the actual, like the, the end that looks like a shoe, is a lot tougher. So Clint definitely didn't like it. He almost threw up. But I can't eat chewy things. The neck end of it was delicious. Now, I said that on. from the beginning, just to be honest. Everyone knows. I can eat clams so long as they're not chewy. Well, boys, absolutely killer day out there. Heck yeah, man, that was Again, awesome. Again, awesome, awesome, awesome experience with the Nil Chick Adventures. The clamming was one of the coolest clamming experiences. So much different than what we're used to. We get to do this stuff all the time, yeah. fortunately, for where we live. But today, the scenery, the kind of clam, the size, everything, playing around the tide pools was so neat. And the other fun part of this place, are these little cabins, you see some people out hanging out by the fire. We made some good buddies, some fellow addicted fans, out uh, at the cleaning station today. So we're gonna go share our catch. You guys, if you want to see this awesome series and you want to see more of these videos, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn your bell on, give us that thumbs up and comment below and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. You guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there.